Uh, welcome back uh, to our sermon series during Holy Week, the seven last words of Jesus. Each night, uh, Sunday through Saturday, we premiere a new video. And uh, tonight, uh, I'm so thankful to have uh, one of my students at Trinity, one of my uh, preaching students, my pastoral ministry student, Haru Masi. Uh, it was actually Haru's idea uh, to put this together. And uh, so thankful that Haru was able to schedule, pull some time aside uh, to prepare this message for you. Uh, this is one of the most famous things that Jesus says on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Thank you, Haru. Good evening, guys. Uh, I hope you are all doing great during this uh, season. And uh, I hope uh, you are protected uh, from coronavirus and quarantine. And um, as you guys all know that we are going through the series of uh, seven last things of Jesus Christ or seven last words of Jesus Christ on the cross. And uh, today is the time for us to discuss the fourth saying of Jesus Christ. And it is kind of weird for me uh, to record myself because uh, I'm not used to it. So if I do something wrong, please forgive me. And uh, today we are going to talk about the fourth saying. And just a little bit background, there are total seven saints of Jesus Christ. And this is the middle one. And um, usually uh, most people break those things into two different categories. In first category, they add the first three saints of Jesus Christ, which he said for other people. But in the second category, they add last four saints of Jesus Christ, which he said for himself. So this was the very first in the last category. And this is the very first thing that he said for himself, because in the first three saints, he was uh, talking about other people, but now, uh, in the last four things, we are going to notice that he is going to talk about himself, and this is the very first thing he talked about himself. And uh, let's read the passage. So this saying of Jesus Christ, you can find it in Matthew 27, and um, verse starting from verse 45, and you can also find it in Mark 15, starting from verse 33. And before me, uh, people did amazing job breaking down those things and explaining it to us, and why Jesus said those things and uh, what was he thinking and uh, today we are going to talk about this and I don't know if I can do that great, great job like that uh, but I will try my best uh, like to tell you guys what was happening and what was the context there and uh, let's read uh, Matthew 27 starting from verse 45 now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour and about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying Eli, Eli, lama shepkethani, which is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And we can find the same thing in the Mark chapter 15, starting from verse 33. And uh, when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness all over, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with the loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shepkathani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is called Elijah. And uh, one of the very first things that I tell you that this is the middle saying of Jesus Christ, and probably physically, that was the most weak point on the cross. Physically, that was the most weak point on the cross, but theologically, that was the most strongest and highest point on the cross, when Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And people tend to say that there are seven sayings. I, I also agree there are seven sayings, but from my personal experience, I usually say there are six sayings and one question. And this is the question that he asked God that why have you forsaken me and let's uh, look at the context so uh, you guys can get what was going on what was the time period and why was there darkness and was that darkness only on Jerusalem or Judea or um, Israel or Philistine or was that darkness all over the world and uh, let's read um, uh, from verse um, 45 in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 27 now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. Uh, so the sixth hour and the ninth hour 
are Roman hours and Roman day was starting at 6 a.m. most of the time uh, because they were used to start their day when the sun was rising and when there was first light they used to start their day and then they used to end their day when the sun was setting and uh, the Roman hour there the sixth hour is noon today and the ninth hour is 3 p.m. so Jesus Christ was on that cross from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. straight for six hours and now it says now from sixth hour which is the third hour on the cross there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour so the first three hours there was no darkness and the last three hours on the cross there was darkness and in the first three hours he said the first three saints or last words and in the last three hours he said the last four sayings one after one and now the darkness is from noon to 3 p.m. and what was that darkness why there was this darkness and that's the question first of all it was the symbol of moral darkness at that time all the rulers and satanic powers of this world were at their peak. That was the sign of moral darkness. And the second reason I found out why there was the darkness was the fulfillment of prophecies in the Old Testament. God himself prophesied about those darknesses. God himself told people that there is going to be a day when there is going to be the darkness. And one of the passages I was able to find was in Oaks chapter 8, starting from verse 9 and 10. Uh, in that day, declares the sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your religious feasts into mourning and all your singing into I will make all of you wear sackcloth and shave your heads. I will make that time like morning of an only sun and the end of it like a bitter day. So God himself prophesied about that darkness and he said that I will make you more like the death of the only sun and I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. So God himself also prophesied about that darkness. The other reason there was this darkness because God the Father was pouring his wrath on his son. And uh, as I was preparing for uh, this message, uh, I was uh, thinking about it and one thing that came into my mind was amazing that when Jesus Christ was born it was midnight then uh, usually we celebrate Christmas at midnight 12 a.m. and uh, the angels went to the shepherds and it says it was night time and then there was this great light shown to them and angels gave them the good news that there is Messiah who is born so there was this great night when during the night time when the light of this world came into this world and now he's going to leave and there is this great darkness I don't think this is coincidence I think God was showing that Jesus Christ is the light of this world when he came when he was born there was great light shown to people at night and now he's going to leave and there is this great darkness in the middle of the day when the sun is at its peak and when it's the most bright time of the day and there was this darkness and then it raised to other question why was this darkness like what was the reason that darkness came like most of the people like they don't want to admit the fact that darkness was because Jesus Christ was being crucified. They don't trust that. And 
I was talking to these people in Pakistan uh, when I was there and uh, they claimed that that darkness was because of solar eclipse. But one thing they are forgetting that Jews used to celebrate Passover on full moon and it is impossible to have a solar eclipse on full moon because at that time the sun and the moon are the opposite directions of each other. There is no way solar eclipse can happen on full moon because solar eclipse happens when the moon comes in the middle of earth and the sun and that's usually on the first moon first or second moon but on the full moon moon is the totally opposite direction of the sun and that cannot happen at all and this was that darkness was from God the Father. That darkness was there because God was pouring wrath on his son. That darkness was there because the light of this world was going to leave this world. That darkness was there because it was showing us that it is also the time of moral darkness. And uh, that, raised, that brought us to our another question. Was that darkness only over Jerusalem? Was that darkness only over Judea? Or it was all over the world? And uh, the translations usually say that it was uh, on the whole land. That is only saying that it is all over the country or it is all over that land. But we can also see the history and historians who wrote about that darkness. And there is this guy who wrote about that darkness. I'm probably going to butcher his name. Uh, we usually call him Saint Dionysus. He was from Egypt and he wrote a letter to Polycarp. And in that letter he wrote that he was able to feel that darkness. He felt that darkness for three hours. And he was able to see the stars. And a lot of other people also wrote about that darkness and they said that darkness was so horrifying that they were able to feel it and they were able to see the stars of the sky. And the sun gave its light. The sun stopped shining. The sun failed to shine because the light of this world was going to leave. And most of the people don't want to believe that. Most of the people don't want to believe that darkness was because Jesus was being crucified. Because they can't understand Bible. If you can't figure it out, then it's probably not for you. Leave the Bible. Start reading history. If you don't believe in Bible, you can get it from history too. That he was crucified. And there was darkness. And that darkness was because of divine ability. And then it says, verse 46, At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama shaktitin. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And um, in the Gospel of Mark, we find the kind of similar words. Uh, there is only one different statement. Um, Matthew used Eli Eli and Mark used Aloi Aloi Lama Shaktetni, which also means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's not like um, there is contradiction in the Bible. They are just using different languages because Matthew is writing his gospel for Jews primarily, and that's why he used the word Eli Eli there. <coughs> So, now we come to the statement of the Jesus after the context that it was from noon to 3 p.m. And in the middle of noon to 3 p.m., near the 3 p.m., Jesus said these words. And uh, there was this great darkness because of that, because Jesus was on cross and God the Father was pouring his wrath on his son. And now we come to the statement. We come to the question that Jesus asked his father. My God, my God, why have you? All over the New Testament, all over the Gospels, Jesus called God the Father, Father. We can look at it in the first saying. 
where he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. We can see it in the last saying when he said, Father, I give my spirit in your hand. But in the middle, he is referring, referring to him as God, not the Father. And why Jesus said God instead of Father? Yeah, he was quoting Psalm 22. And that was the Psalm that Jews used to quote when they were in pain, in agony, in distress. And Jesus is quoting that song. But at the same time, he is calling him God, not the Father. Why he quoted that song? Why he is calling him God, not the Father? And a lot of people raise questions on that and they usually ask like, oh, if he was God and if he was Godhead of Trinity, why he is calling him God? Are there two gods? But the answer is at that time he was on his official duty. At that time he was doing the work that was assigned to him by his father. And I know a story uh, from a movie that I watched one time and the father and the son was both in army. And the father was at superior rank and the son was uh, under him. And he sent him on a mission knowing that mission is dangerous knowing that mission, in that mission his son may die and son didn't want to go but he still went because at that time his father was not commanding him his officer, superior officer was and that, I, know, I know that example falls short of it that illustration falls short of what is happening here but Jesus is saying my God because he don't want to bring up the emotional and intimate relation with the father at that moment when he is pouring wrath on his son. He don't want to bring that up that I am your son. At that time, he is probably thinking that I am here and I am about to finish the work you have sent me for. And that's why he is calling him God because he was on his official duty. He was on his business. And then he asked the question, why have you forsaken me? Why Jesus was forsaken on that cross? Why God the Father forsake Jesus? Did he left him alone? Did he really forsake him? And the answer is sad. Yes. God the Father forsake his son on that cross. God the Father left his son on that cross for you and for me. If God the Father was not going to left his son alone, he would have left us alone. If he wasn't going to forsake his son, then he would have forsaken. Jesus Christ was left alone and forsaken on that cross so that we can be with God. Otherwise, if he wasn't going to left alone on that cross, you and I were going to get forsaken by God the Father. He had to make a choice. He gave his only son for us so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus was forsaken on that cross and that reminds me of the passage from Matthew 26 when Jesus was praying in Gethsemane and he said verse 39 he said and going a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as you will People think Jesus was saying that because he was going to get crucified. That's what he knew from the beginning. He knew that the purpose of him coming to this world is to die. Then why at the last moment he was asking that question? He was asking that cup to pass away. And he knew that that's never going to happen. Because he wasn't asking Father to stop the crucifixion. He was talking about the separation. He was talking about 
how God the Father was going to leave him there. And he was talking about how God the Father was going to pour wrath on him. That's what he was talking about. And on that cross, he was left alone. On that cross, he was forsaken. And he was forsaken for you and for me. He was forsaken so that they can arrest him. He was forsaken so that they can beat him. He was forsaken that they can put crown of thorns on his head. He was forsaken so that they can spit on his face. He was forsaken so that they can slap him. He was forsaken so that they can put him on that cross. He was forsaken so that they can crucify him. And that's what he's asking in that moment. In that moment, he's in pain, agony. Yes, he is quoting Psalm 22. But at the same time, he was forsaken on that cross. And the title I usually give to this saying is Jesus Christ, the complete sacrifice. Because he was forsaken on that cross for us and he fulfilled the work that Father assigned him. That's why he called him God. And that's why he was forsaken on that cross. And the next verse says, um, and then Jesus said that and some of the bystanders hearing it said this man is calling Elijah that's not what Jesus was saying he was not calling Elijah for help he was calling God the Father maybe the name rhymes with Elijah Maybe that was the nickname of Elijah for Jews. I don't know. But people misunderstood it. They said he's calling Elijah because Elijah was the greatest prophet and Jews knew that they, he's going to come back. And maybe they thought that Jesus at that time is asking for help from Elijah because he's in deep agony and pain. But Jesus was not calling Elijah. He was calling God the Father and he was asking him, why have you forsaken me? And answer of that question is, you and I. And sometimes in our lives, we take our salvation for granted. We accept Jesus Christ and then we think we can do whatever we want because he already paid that price. But we don't realize is what he had to go through to pay that price for us. My friends, you should never take your salvation for granted. You should never take the grace of God for granted. Jesus Christ paid a big price on that cross for us. Yes, he gave his life, but he was also forsaken by God the Father. And it sometimes hurt me when people take their salvation for granted because they think they accept Jesus and that forgave all their sins and they are going to be with him. And yes, indeed, if they accepted him with true heart, their sins are forgiven. But at the same time, we should be obedient to him. We should be following his commands for what he did. He was forsaken by God the Father on that cross for us. He was left alone on that cross for us so that we can be with him. If he wasn't going to be left alone there, then we would have been left alone by God. And that's the price he paid for us. And let's think about our lives. If we are taking our salvation for granted, if we are taking this for granted, what Jesus did for us on that cross, and we are doing whatever we want, and we are not following his will in our lives, and we are not obeying him, then we should think about this, what he did for us. He gave his life for us on the cross. And what God the Father did, it was not easy for Jesus, and it was not easy for God the Father. But out of the divine judgment, he had to pour his wrath on his son, his only son, which he gave away for us, 
which he forsake, which he overlooked for us. You and I need to think about this. Are we taking our salvation for granted? Are we realizing what God the Father and God the Son did at that moment? Are we realizing in our lives what Son had to go through? And not only Son, but God the Father had to go through at that time. For us. So that we can be with Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you humbly as your children and we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for what you did on that cross for us. Thank you, God, for doing that for us. We weren't able to do that for ourselves. You came down, Jesus, and you did it for us. Help us to understand that what you did on that cross was not easy. Help us to not take our salvation for granted. Help us to understand what you had to go through at that time period. And help us obedient to you always. God, thank you for doing this for us. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot for giving me your time. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and I hope you have a good time.